Nobody likes fake people. But at the same time, the vast majority of us will all pretend at some point or another. We do it to make ourselves feel better. We do it because we want others to like us. Sometimes we do it without even realizing it. So why do people pretend? If we'll run through the reasons, how to deal with fake people and how we can all feel freer to be who we really are. Why do we pretend to be someone we are not? One, to manipulate others. When we can tell someone isn't being real with us, we often feel deceived. We might feel like someone has pretended to be our friend or pretended to care about us, but only for their own benefit. This usually feels like the worst kind of pretending. We may feel cheated, lied to, and used. Sometimes people pretend in order to get what they want. They realize that telling the truth or revealing how they really feel won't serve their best interests. Pretending and lying are often indistinguishable. Just like all of us lie, all of us pretend to sometimes. Perhaps the intention behind both the lie and the pretense is often what makes us decide how harmful we think it is. So understandably, when we know someone is pretending in order to manipulate us, we are far less forgiving about it. People can be very self-serving. In certain situations, people may pretend to be someone they are not, or feel and think something that they don't, simply because they believe it's more likely to help them achieve their goals. 2. To avoid conflict. At its very heart, pretending is a form of avoidance. Some people choose to pretend so as to avoid conflict. Maybe they're afraid of being criticized if they reveal themselves, or maybe they just don't want to have a difficult conversation. They may even pretend to be someone else in order to avoid having to confront their true feelings. In this way, they are not only avoiding conflict with others, but they are trying to avoid internal conflict with themselves. They don't want to have to question themselves. The way they act on the outside doesn't necessarily reflect how they feel inside, it could mean that they're trying to protect themselves by concealing how they truly feel. People who want to avoid conflict are often scared to get angry or upset because they fear rejection. They worry that showing undesirable emotions or having disputes will leave them isolated. Passive aggression is a classic outlet of someone who is pretending to not be upset or mad when really they are. Because they feel unable to voice how they really feel and bury it, it seeps out in other ways. Another example might be one partner going along with things in a relationship to try to keep the peace. They may worry that voicing their grievances will rock the boat and push their partner away, leaving them alone. 3. To fit in. Sometimes we pretend to be someone else because we want to fit in. Maybe we want to seem cool or popular. Maybe we want to appear friendly or nice. Or perhaps we want to make ourselves look better than we feel we actually are. We may pretend to be someone we aren't in order to gain acceptance from society in general. It may also be that we want to try to impress someone in particular. For example, you may pretend to be outgoing and funny in order to win over your boss. You may pretend to be smart and studious in order to impress a girl. You may pretend to be interested in sports in order to fit in at school. You may pretend to be religious in order to fit in with your family. The truth is that we all feel pressure to fit into social groups. The need for acceptance is innate, it is part of the human instinct. As psychiatrist Joanna Cannon points out in Psychology Today, this can lead us to present different sides of ourselves depending on who we are with and where we are. We might have numerous additions of ourselves, for work, or at home, or even online. All tweaked and modified in order to be accepted in that particular situation, of course, the question is, are we being accepted for who we truly are? or merely for the version we choose to present of ourselves. And the reality is that those people who can't or won't pretend at least a little bit, can feel excluded. This duplicity works very well for most of us, but some people only have one version of themselves to present. They are unable, or unwilling, to sandpaper themselves down to fit society's expectations, and because their behavior or appearance doesn't quite match the herd, they are pushed further and further to the periphery of a community. 4. We don't feel good enough. Many of us live with a dark secret buried deep inside. Behind so much of the pretending that anyone does is this secret that we desperately try to protect. Not feeling good enough as you are. We know that it is part of our genetic makeup as human beings to want to fit in. But the question remains, why don't we feel like being ourselves will allow us to do this? 
And the answer for many people is that they are scared that they are not good enough to be accepted, loved, or admired. So instead, they hide behind pretenses. They create masks that cover up what they really think and feel. They put up walls around themselves, and they pretend to be something they aren't. But this is hiding low self-esteem. Usually, it is the most arrogant and overconfident people who underneath are the most insecure. Showing off, bragging, exaggerating, they're all a cover-up for a feeling of lack. Pretending to know something that you don't. Inflating your status. Pretending to have money or possessions to impress people. All of these acts are about trying to protect the ego. But it only goes to show that their ego is very fragile. Truly secure people do not need to pretend. But it actually takes a lot of quiet self-belief to never feel the need to hide behind any pretenses. 5. We are scared to be vulnerable. Sometimes it can almost seem like pretending makes life easier for us on the surface, but it is a defense mechanism. Maybe we pretend to someone that everything is okay when really it's not. Perhaps we pretend that we don't need anyone else when really we feel the opposite deep down inside. When we pretend we don't have to deal with difficult emotions if we are able to hide them away. Our brain may tell us that if we pretend to be happy when we're sad, then we don't have to face the pain. If we pretend to be fine when we're feeling scared, then we don't need to deal with the fear. Or maybe we pretend to be someone we're not just to avoid having to talk about things that make us uncomfortable. The problem is that pretending can become an addiction. It becomes a way to cope with problems rather than deal with them head on. It also means that we are missing out on opportunities to grow and learn more about ourselves. It prevents us from learning how to manage our own feelings better. And it keeps us from developing healthy relationships with other people. Because without genuine honesty and vulnerability, there is no real connection between two people. 6. We're conditioned to pretend. Pretending is so deeply ingrained into our culture that most of us learn it from an early age. It's likely that some will be more conditioned to pretend depending upon both their genetics and environment. That doesn't mean we can't change, but we're all pre-programmed to a certain extent by these factors. For example, if you grow up in a very fake household where both your parents or caregivers constantly pretended, you're more likely to copy that behavior. If you learn that it isn't safe to be yourself, or that it is expected of you to be a certain way, then pretending can even be a trauma response. Society has certain expectations of us and we may pretend to try and fit into that. The truth is, most of us never realize how much power and potential lies within us. We become bogged down by continuous conditioning from society, the media, our education system and more. 7. We're afraid of what others think of us. Perhaps if we knew that we would never face judgment, we would never feel the need to pretend. But because we are naturally social creatures, we rely on the support of the group for our survival. That means we also naturally fear the judgment of others. Losing their approval could have meant being cast out of the group, and this biological fear still plays heavily upon us. The threat may have changed now, but we still don't want to be rejected, ridiculed, or judged. So often we don't want anyone to know that we have doubts, fears, or weaknesses, and so we pretend. But it comes with a very big catch. If we believe that we must hide our true selves from others, we won't be able to develop authentic connections. This leads to isolation, loneliness, and depression. When we're not living authentically, we end up feeling empty and disconnected. 8. To avoid intimacy. Pretending is both a defense mechanism and a way of self-sabotaging. When we pretend to be someone we are not, we create a barrier around ourselves. This prevents people from seeing the real us, which can make us feel less exposed. True intimacy can feel scary. Letting someone know the real us requires that we let them get close to us. In doing so we must open ourselves up to all those things that we have already established can feel incredibly threatening. Judgment, criticism, rejection, disapproval, and more. Pretending can be an effective way of dodging intimacy by keeping people at arm's length from the real you.